Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about spies and their use as an agent in the game Medieval 2 Total War. For the purposes of simplicity I'm only going to be talking about the base game rather than any expansions or mods, otherwise things might get a bit too complicated. Spies can be recruited from a civilian settlement that has at least tier 1 in the in chain of buildings. If you're a Christian faction, Tier 1 is a brothel. If you're an Islamic faction, Tier 1 is a shisha bar. The buildings have exactly the same bonuses, they just have different names. Some factions can also build a castle library or an academy if they have a Tier 5 military settlement, which is a citadel. I've been unable to find a definitive list of which factions can do this. Um, I know that Denmark is one of them. Spies cost 350 gold to recruit and 100 gold per turn to upkeep. If you use a spy's active ability or you catch an enemy spy, a video clip will play of an extremely unsubtle individual sneaking about with nefarious intent. There's quite a few different ones. Spies have one active ability, which is to infiltrate. To use it, hover over the intended target and this will show the likelihood of success. Then right click to follow through. If your mission succeeds, the spy will successfully infiltrate the entity, but if it fails, the spy will be killed. It's not like a diplomat where you might lose an influence from a failed mission or an assassin where he might escape. The spy will be killed and you will lose the agent. So pick your missions carefully. Also, Relations between your faction and the target faction could be damaged, and they might even declare war on you. Intended targets could be an ally, a neutral faction, or an enemy. And it could be an army, a general, another agent, a fort, settlement, or even a ship. What are the applications of this active ability? When used against another army, it will reveal the exact troop units and numbers in that army. You can often see most of this information anyway by moving one of your agents or one of your own armies near the other army. But this won't always reveal everything, so it can still be useful to use a spy in this way. For example, it might reveal that the other army has siege equipment in it and that might affect what decisions you would make with your own troop distribution and movements. This can also be used against another agent or general. Doing so should reveal their traits and ancillaries. This is of limited use because even without spying on another agent or general, you can still see their attribute score. Regarding settlements, if your spy successfully infiltrates one, you can see exactly what buildings and troops are present. You may be able to see most of this anyway if you have an agent or an army nearby, but some things can still be hidden until the settlement is infiltrated. Infiltrating will reveal everything. This could be useful if the information would inform your decision as to what settlement you want to take next. Spires will cause unrest in a settlement they have infiltrated. It is important to note that you can send more than one spy indeed several spies, into a single settlement that you wish to infiltrate. I did some testing and I believe they cause about a 5% reduction in public order due to unrest per one subterfuge skill point, up to a maximum of 10. So if I sent two spies into one settlement and they have 11 subterfuge between them, the extra point won't do anything, public order will be reduced by a maximum of 50%. If you combine this with other ways of causing unrest, such as sending priests to convert the population, sending assassins to sabotage buildings that give bonuses to public order, you could potentially cause a civil revolt. The most useful advantage of infiltration is that it gives a chance of a spy opening the gates of a settlement. Now, upon you attacking it, there will be a chance you will not be required to siege or produce siege equipment to break through the walls and you can assault it in the same turn you besiege it. If you fight the battle on the map, the gates will act as if you own them. 
In a game with limited turns, saving turns is helpful by itself, but this also provides other strategic advantages. If a settlement was poorly defended, it means you can take it straight away and avoid there being any reinforcements coming to help. Also, if you're a Catholic faction, the Pope often gets quite protective when another Catholic faction is getting smaller and smaller and will sometimes issue what I think of a cease and desist mission, that you will be excommunicated for attacking them. If you can wipe them out in a single turn using spies, then um, you can avoid this happening. If you infiltrate another settlement with several spies, you can increase the chance of opening the gate to over 100%. It is helpful to remember that other factions can also use these active abilities, so watch out for them. On to passive abilities. They give a lot of vision through the fog of war. They reveal other factions, spies and assassins, who otherwise remain stealthed to armies, settlements, diplomats, merchants, etc. Your spies also have this ability and are revealed by other faction spies. They significantly improve your chances of stopping another faction, spies and assassins, carrying out infiltration, assassinations and sabotage. So how can these be applied to improve your gameplay? The high vision is inexhaustibly useful. If you are at war, you can identify vulnerable enemy settlements. You could see which ones have few or poor quality troops, which ones have no reinforcements in range, or whether a settlement has got ballista or cannon towers. You can better predict where an unfavourable battle could occur, therefore avoiding it. Spies can also reveal armies waiting to ambush. Also, you can keep a track on the Timurids and Mongols. Putting spies in your settlements is a sound strategy. You can see approaching armies at a greater distance and if you don't have watchtowers up yet, that's very useful. You could redistribute troops, so a settlement that you think might be targeted by an attack is better defended. Also, you can see other factions, spies and assassins, so you could arrange for an unfortunate accident to occur. Your spy will greatly reduce the chance of another faction's hostile espionage missions from succeeding. So it's less likely that your settlement will be attacked by the enemy and the enemy will be able to open the gates with a spy that they've infiltrated the settlement with. If this happened, it would prevent you mounting an effective defence. It's also less likely that any of your generals or agents stationed in your settlement can be assassinated. It's best to try and have a spy in each settlement, but if there isn't enough money for this or enough spy buildings, you may need to prioritise. You can merge spies into an army, which will improve the vision through the fog of war and will reduce the chance of a general within that army from being assassinated. It's important to note that if it's a crusading army, the spy won't benefit from the increased movement points, so the whole army will move slower. The attribute affecting the success of passive and active spy missions is subterfuge. Any spy's subterfuge rating can be seen on the character card by selecting him. The value of this rating is the sum of all his traits and ancillaries. The spy does have other skills such as line of sight, but these are not obviously displayed on the character card and you have to read through the traits to see them. How to maximise workforce potential. When I started looking into traits and ancillary mechanisms, they were a bit more complicated than I thought they'd be and probably require their own video to properly explain. So I'm just going to talk about what actions to take and avoid delving too deeply into how the actual mechanics work. On creation, I would recommend to recruit spies in civilian settlements rather than castles. There is more scope to have buildings that give better starting traits and only some factions can recruit spies from castles anyway. If you have a dockyard, this can give the spyglass ancillary, which gives plus two to line of sight. If you have a market, this can give pickpocket ancillary, which gives plus one to subterfuge. And if you're an Islamic faction, you can also get pet monkey, which gives plus one to subterfuge. If you're an Islamic faction, you can build a racing track, which has a 100% chance to give Black Stallion Ancillary, which increases movement points. 
this ancillary is transferable. You can also gain up to three subterfuge from having a thieves guild, depending on what tier it is. Furthermore, if you leave the spy in a settlement with a brothel, shisha bar or higher level of spy building, there's a chance to get two other ancillaries, Beguiling Bard, which gives plus one subterfuge, and Dancer, which gives plus two subterfuge. There's a chance to get these ancillaries at the end of turn. Spies can gain up to three subterfuge on creation in a trait line that the player has no influence over at all. Um, so you could create spies in strategic locations and then park them in important towns or cities for a few turns that have at least a brothel or shisha bar, assuming you have the resources to do this. That way, before you use them for anything active or risky, they will already have a few levels in subterfuge. Each spy can potentially gain plus five subterfuge and plus five line of sight from successful missions. I would recommend to send them on low risk missions because mission failure can mean loss of the spy. So far as I'm aware, this only includes active missions, so infiltrating a settlement or spying on an enemy army, general or agent. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment or subscribe. I also stream on Twitch, so I've included that in the description.